Hiya, my name is Jay and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be playing some Jurassic World Evolution back on our sandbox park on East Lasorna, set in 1993. Now before we begin, let me just apologize, there's just been a storm and there's still some thunder going on so you might hear that in my audio voiceover, but hopefully it's not too bad and maybe it'll add a little bit of, uh, a little bit of drama, a little bit of atmosphere, so you know, why not, why not? Anyways, today we're going to be building one habitat for our ankylosaurs and our dryosaurs, alongside putting in our pteranodons into the aviary. With the ankylosaurus, um, we're going to be using the 2001 skins from Jurassic Park 3. So that's the dark skin with the red patches around the eyes. I think it's a really gorgeous skin. I'm not necessarily a fan of the Jurassic World ankylosaurus. I think it's really plain. It's just sort of this mottled brown. Um, there's just not a lot of visual interest to it. It's all kind of the same color with not a lot of variation in tone. Now, I know there's a lot of real animals with skins like that. But in, in the Jurassic World movie, I think a lot of the dinosaurs have almost the exact same sort of colors, which, which are really bland. With the exception of like the raptors, all the herbivores and even most of the carnivores that we do see are color-wise very uninteresting, let me just say. And um, in the 2001 movie, Jurassic Park 3, we actually got a lot of really cool skin patterns for a lot of the animals. In fact, I'd say Jurassic Park 3 while not being the best of the original trilogy, definitely had the best design for all the animals. They all looked really, really interesting, and they all looked like real animals. The raptors especially had brilliant skins, and we'll be using them later on in this series. For the ankylosaurus today, I've chosen two skins, the original 2001 um, skin and the green variant of that skin. For a lot of these dinosaurs, what I do is I choose one skin and I choose a skin that's kind of complementary to that to act as sort of um, male and female variants. Even though obviously the dinosaurs in the game are all uh, female, they don't have different sexes and sexual dimorphism. Me giving them different skins is kind of a way to introduce the illusion of having separate sexes of dinosaurs, which I think works out pretty well, especially if we take them as animals like uh, birds today, which are, you know, modern day dinosaurs, and how there's so much sexual dimorphism between males and females, where males are super bright, or occasionally females as well, and um, the other sex would then, generally speaking, be more dull or less flashy. So that's what I'm going to be doing for a lot of these dinosaurs. Now I've chosen the Ankylosaurus not just to check out the new skins, but because I think it's a Sort of a, so a solid animal to put at the front of our park because we're putting this uh, habitat right in front of the visitor center. And it's going to kind of take the place of what you might have in the start of a zoo, maybe a hippo or something like that. An animal which is kind of a big ticket animal, but not your, you know, your biggest attraction. So that it gets people interested in the zoo, kind of sets you up for what to expect for the rest of the park. And that's why I chose that. And the Dryosauruses, they're going to act more like um, just additions to the habitat where the Ankylosaurus are going to be kind of the main feature and the Dryosaurus are kind of just going to cohabitate with them and just live alongside them. And I thought they look really good together as well. I'm probably going to do this with a lot of the small dinosaurs, just put them in with some bigger ones. So we're also putting in the Pteranodons in this episode. So we're going to go over to the aviary and release three different skins. And we're going to have a look at them and see how they kind of fly around and behave. I think they're some of the coolest new additions we've had in the game since, well, since it released, really. They are, they're really, really cool. I know they're on looped animations and they don't have as much uh, function, so to speak, as the other uh, animals in the game. But I just think they look really good. They open up the, you know, they open up the doors for future pterosaurs, like, you know, the Jurassic World Dimorphodon which I, again, I have to say, is a hor horrible design. It just looks awful as an animal. <laughs> I feel like I, I, you know, I rant about Jurassic World and their designs a lot, uh, but for good reason. It's because we already had, like, really great dinosaur and creature designs from the previous movies, and instead of, you know, building on those, they just kind of chose the blandest, most weird-looking designs possible. So, yeah, that's kind of my my perspective on that, but yeah, I'll try not to rant too much about them. But in this game, they do happen to really choose the really good designs, and 
we have the option to kind of, now we have the option especially, to switch between the bland Jurassic World ones and the really good Jurassic Park ones. So that's kind of a, a good thing in my book, I think. <laughs> Again, I apologize. I'll try not to rant too much about um, the Jurassic World designs in my future videos. But yeah, today there's not going to be an awful lot of building. That's kind of it for now. I do hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you like, definitely drop me a like. Uh, subscribe if you want for more of this content. I'm going to be doing more Planet Zoo soon. We're going to finish up this series as well and probably start a second series on Isla Nublar. If you want to subscribe, feel free to. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.